in, you know, the fitness industry has changed since I started. Um, I started back probably, my first competition was in 2000. And I really got involved with uh, supplement companies and stuff like that in 2004. It was the first time I was uh, sponsored. And um, back then, there wasn't a lot of social media. Uh, it was all about the magazines, uh, you know, placing well at shows. So if you're a really good bodybuilder, you get well known and you get the coverage and stuff like that. So uh, nowadays, you don't need to be a uh, top bodybuilder or, or even compete to be a fitness uh, personality, if you want to say. So it gives a lot more people the opportunity to be known if, if you don't want to compete. You know what I mean? So um, that's one I think is the main main difference is not, you know, even being the best bodybuilders down the world, people don't even know who they are. They probably don't get paid well, but you can also get someone who's just got the, a good look or a good personality that people like to watch. And then um, they're the people that people are popular now, you know, so it's, it's changed quite a bit. Uh, my first contract I got in 2004 was with uh, Animal Universal Nutrition. Um, I was kind of blown away at the time, you know, that someone would want to pay me to take my picture <laughs> and uh, use it to sell supplements, you know, because I was just used to training for myself. I didn't ever want to be a pro. I didn't want to be sponsored because I find today it's it's you know everyone wants that pro card. Everybody wants to be sponsored. That wasn't really my my uh, mission when I was doing this. I just wanted to look good and I wanted to train, I wanted to be big and freaky and veins and stuff. Um, but they were offered me, it was like, I think like $2,500 American for every photo shoot I did with them. And I, at the time I was, I was a, a bouncer, you know, working in a club in downtown Newfoundland. So I'm like, you know, $2,500 to take my picture. I'm like, you sign me up, you know what I mean? I think I did like four or five photo shoots that year. So it was like, you know, over 10 grand I made American. So me, that was like, holy shit, I'm rich. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it was pretty crazy. That, and then, you know, to believe that someone would want your picture to, and use it for something, like I said, to sell supplements is, uh, was strange for me because I was from such a small place. And I'm just a small guy, you know, from a little town. Like, we didn't have, you know, uh, 24 or anything, there's no McDonald's, there's no Tim Hortons, there's where I'm from, there's no street lights, you know, so I'm not used to that life, so it was, it was a big change. I was with Animal for a long time. Um, I felt like maybe I've done everything I could do with Animal. There was a lot of new guys up and coming, and they were, I seemed to feel like kind of putting the, the spotlight on some new guys, and it was like, you know, I kind of wanted to do something different, uh, something kind of on my own kind of thing, and uh, at the time, I had some good friends of mine, Noah and Dorian Hamilton. I was actually at Flex Lewis's uh, bodybuilding competition, one of his shows he has, and I, you know, I was standing at a booth and they, I, my phone rang. He said, "Hey Frank, would you would you like to be a part of a something company with just just us? You know what I mean? Just a group of you know some guys that are my best friends, and I would actually have um, influence on how the supplements were made and my you know input on ju not just being an athlete but also being input into the supplements." And I'm like. Oh, for sure, I'd love to. Um, so that was the main reason I left Animal was to do my own thing with, uh, with a couple of good friends of mine, and uh, it took a, it took a few years in the working, but we're here right now. I got a couple of my favorite moments ever on stage. Um, you know, even maybe my first competition. I might have to say a couple, so because there's a couple of good ones. So um, my first competition, you know, I was scared shitless. You know, what I mean, I didn't know what I was doing. I remember, I walked on stage in the morning show and I totally blanked out what to do. And then my friend was in the audience, the guy that was helping me get ready, that did my routine. He was in the audience, stood up and started doing my routine in the audience and I was watching him. I just did what he did. So I just was like doing all the stuff he was doing and I just was, it was just funny at the time. Um, you know, and I won that show too. It was my first show I won and, and um, it's funny because the guest poser at the time, I was in better shape than he was and probably bigger than he was. And my first show, and he told me after I won, you know, I was Mr. Newfoundland 2000, he said, uh, don't do bodybuilding as a career, there's no money in it. And I was like, wow, my, my whole life has been bodybuilding and I've made a pretty good living out of it, you know what I mean? Um, so it was like, you know, it was kind of not that, that was a good memory, but it was like more memories. Um, maybe getting my pro card too was pretty, a big, a big moment. It was my third show. Um, I was only 25 years old, which was kind of young back then. It's not young anymore, but for then it was young. And uh, I remember I won the show and it was like pretty much, as soon as I walked out, everyone just said it was over. And that was all Canada, you know, and I didn't expect that in my third show. It was like uh, pretty, pretty, 
memorable moment, but I think the most uh, was when I did the Mr. Olympia, and um, I did my call out when I went out on stage. Uh, no, actually, no, Jay Cutler was out on stage. This was his last year competing, and he did his call out, and he came back to the lineup, and he had to walk by me, and he shook my hand on stage, and I thought that was cool, because like, I know Jay a little bit, you know, over the years, but I just found it was, it was a, a form of respect to like, you know, that he did that right on stage that everybody could see. Of everybody else on stage, he shook my hand and I was like, wow, like, you know, showing me the respect that like, hey, I made it here, you know what I mean? Like, it's my first time and like, you know, he's there trying to win the show and he still had the time to like care about somebody else. So that makes, you know, he's one of the best ambassadors for the sport to do something. Maybe so, so small to him, he doesn't remember it, but I will never forget that moment for sure. There's some, a lot of good and there's some bad um, because you know the people who stick by you and the good and the bad because I've had a lot of good good times and like people know my, if you know my story, there's been a lot of bad stuff, accidents and injuries and all that kind of stuff. So um, you know who your real friends are and the real people who are real, real, I don't like to say the word fans, but like, you know, people who really care because, you know, a lot, it's easy for them to like you when you're up and everything's great and you're big and ripped and you're making money and you're popular. But I know a lot of people stuck by me that don't even know me, even when things were bad. They may hope, you know, send in messages, hope you're getting better, hope you know, we want to see you back on stage or back, you know, all this kind of stuff. So it's like, I think I learned um, over the years that, you know, not everybody cares about your best interest and uh, you, you figure out who's, who's really there for you, you know what I mean? Especially the guys that are my friends now. You know what I mean? Everybody that's on Team HD, the guys that are around here that I live around, we're all like best friends. We hang out every day, we go to, we go to the gym together, you know. It doesn't matter if I'm big or small, injured or huge or ripped, they're, they're always there for you, you know what I mean? So it's, it's a learning experience for sure. Getting injuries in this sport is, can be very hard on people, um, especially if they're serious injuries. I've had a couple. Uh, and you know, advice I can give to someone, uh, you know, even for me, what was the worst part of it, the hardest part, or someone getting over it. Because I've had a couple, I tore my tricep, uh, when I was pretty young, I was like 29 years old, and I, I thought my whole career was over. And I remember I competed, and people were like, "Oh, he's finished," and stuff like that. It was mentally more harder than the physical, you know what I mean? Um, but the best part about it was I proved people wrong that your physique is not just one muscle being lost. There's there's a lot more to it. Um, and then coming back from my car accident, you know, I, I went from 270 pounds down to 185. Um, and the doctors are telling me that you'll never train, you, you know, you won't work out again, you won't compete. And I, I cried. You know, I mean, I was, and then they're telling me you're going to cut me open and take this out and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, my life is over because this is my life. You know, my, my body, my, my, even if it wasn't a career, my life is still training. I love to train. So, you know, I was, I was, I was upset. And the guy told me to take nine, nine months to a year off just training and all the, way, all the way. And I went back after 10 weeks because I'm like, I can't go out like this. You know what I mean? And a lot of people were telling me, you know, don't go back to the gym because you can sue the people that hit you and make, you can make so much money and take care of yourself for the rest of your life. But I'm like, yeah, is that going to make me happy? Never training again and making some money? So I obviously didn't do that. I went back to the gym after 10 weeks, which was too soon. I remember I even ripped open the scar on my arm because my arm got too pumped and the stitches were still in my arm. But that's how crazy I am. Um, but uh, the mental part is probably the hardest part, you know what I mean? Overcoming things. And anybody out there that's going through the same kind of thing, because I do get messages about injuries all the time. People are talking to me about like, could be as small as from a tricep tear to a, a hernia to like people got major car accidents, you know, because I've kind of been through it all too. Um, is that, you know, I don't know, I just never gave up. I just, I, I told myself that I needed to know if I still had it and I gave it my all, you know what I mean? And the same thing I said earlier is that just because you hurt one muscle doesn't mean you can't make your legs amazing. You're, if you tear tear your bicep, you still have triceps, you still have forearms, you still have chest and shoulders. And I think make those things so good and be so ripped and conditioned, do everything so good that it will take away from that, you know what I mean? Because I went on stage, I had two torn triceps, half my shoulders torn, and I made it to Miss Olympia. So it tells me that, you know, it's not all about just, you know, I wasn't perfect, but I worked my ass off and it, and it, it worked out, you know what I mean? And I think anybody else can do the same thing. Because I know a lot of people, I know other friends of mine that had, are very high level bodybuilders, had some of the same injuries as me and they just quit and I understand because it's so mentally hard to not be as good as you were but it's like I'd rather be 100% what I got left than nothing you know what I mean so it's like I don't I don't have any even now like these days, these days people ask me why do you keep training so hard or keep trying to do this and that I was like because I because I can't 
I mean, I'll go till, until the wheels fall off until I can't do it no more. So, um, I don't know. Because it just tells me that this is something I really love to do. It's not, it's not about the competing. It's not about the sponsorships. It's not about that for me. It's, I just love to train. You know, so to love the train is, I think all of us feel that way. And it's like, I feel like there's a lot of people that do it these days that are doing it for the love of being famous, money, being popular, all that kind of stuff, more than the love of just going into the gym. So, I'm Frank McGrath. I'm an IFBB pro and I'm a HD muscle athlete.